We turn now back to Miami, Florida. You know Miami's in Florida, where the five candidates are preparing for the third Republican presidential debate. CBS News Miami investigative reporter Jim DeFeedy joins us. I'm always happy to talk to Jim. Jim, so you've got these two events in Miami. This looks like a kind of uh, informal Florida Republican political throwdown. It certainly does. I mean, I think what you see here is Donald Trump is not ready to cede the state of Florida to anyone. And so he's flexing a little by holding a much larger event just a half an hour from the debate site right in everyone's backyard, knowing he's probably going to get more coverage than the debate itself. And what is the sense in Florida about the future of Governor DeSantis's presidential campaign and all the ambitions that seem to be roiling in Florida six months ago, looking like he might be the alternative to Trump. Has that dissipated? It certainly has. I mean, if you think about it, a year ago, last election, 2022, we were, to, we were ready to crown uh, you know, Ron DeSantis as the candidate who will be able to overtake Donald Trump and move forward, you know, that the, oh, he had all the momentum on his side. Then a week ago, all we could talk about was whether or not, you know, he had lifts in his boots. Now, the last few days have been good for Ron DeSantis, and he's certainly hoping to build on them. He got the endorsement from Kim Reynolds in Iowa. You know, the fact that uh, that Yunkin, Governor Yunkin, did so poorly in Virginia actually delights the Ron DeSantis camp because they see that as a victory for them because it eliminates Yunkin as a potential threat. So given everything that happened in Virginia with the Iowa endorsement, you know, Ron DeSantis is coming in, and this is really an opportunity for him tonight to try to differentiate himself. But I'm going to tell you, Major, compare, I realize what the, you know, the polls are saying. I do expect Ron DeSantis to be tripped up somewhat on the abortion question, given that he signed a six-week abortion ban, which does seem out of the mainstream. I think Nikki Haley will hit him on it. The Haley-DeSantis dynamic may well prove to be the most important of the evening. Jim DeFeedy, thank you so much. With that little bit of an introduction, let's bring in Kristen Davidson and Kristen Kurkowski. Kristen is the chief operating officer for Ron DeSantis's Never Back Down PAC, and Kristen is spokesperson for the Nikki Haley Back SFA Fund Incorporated. So I will ask you both, and because your names are so well aligned with one another, you can decide for yourself which of the Kristens goes first. Is tonight's debate solely about Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. Go ahead. I'll go ahead first. Uh, <laughs> this is Kirsten. Um, <laughs> just to clarify, um, so I, I think tonight it is going to be great for Nikki. I think that she um, has shown the last couple of debates that she is, gonna, you know, she's going to do what she needs to do. Um, I think that we can expect that there, you know, there's some folks on the on the debate stage next to her um, who really need to score some points, and I expect that you know she's going to take some incoming hits. But we all have also seen from Nikki that when she's hit, she's going to you know, hit back uh, that much harder. So I think that it's going to be a good night for Nikki. Um, and I think that it's going to be interesting to watch what some of the other folks on the stage who have a little bit more to lose, you know, what they're going to, uh, what they're going to be up to. Kristen Davidson. Yeah, I think this is a great night for, yeah, it's a great night for Governor DeSantis. He, he started a great week with the endorsement of Governor Reynolds in Iowa. That's one nail in the coffin for Nikki Haley in, in Iowa. Um, she was really counting on that endorsement and to have that power and uh, conservative voice behind Governor DeSantis and I would just really uh, symbolizes the strength that that we have on the ground there. I think, you know, if we're talking about issues like, you know, con social conservatives and especially conservatives in Iowa really care about, like the pro-life issue, Nikki Haley is not going to be able to answer to that. She's been very wishy-washy on the issue. She got kind of is pro and con and conservatives specifically in Iowa don't know where she stands. And as she goes through the scrutiny and decline phase of her campaign, um, primary voters, caucus goers, are going to realize that, that right now she's coalescing the moderates, um, small uh, moderates of the party, and that she is not aligned with the conservative or Republican Party of 2024. Uh, Kirsten, you want to weigh in on that, that Nikki Haley is not aligned with conservatives in the Republican Party? Well, I think her standing is uh, solidly number two in Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. Would beg, those voters would beg to differ with that viewpoint. Um, but I, you know, I think that we're going to see her make her, her conservative contrast uh, with Governor DeSantis and the others on the stage tonight. Um, and I'm guessing she's going to come fully prepared. 
And Kristen, how do you think? Yeah, I'm the very issue excited to make that contrast with. Yeah. How do you yeah, think? No, I think the, I'm, I'm very excited to make that contrast between between Governor DeSantis and Nikki Haley. If there's a battle for who's the most conservative and who's most in line for the future mm -hmm. of the Republican Party, Governor DeSantis is going to win that hands down. Especially looking at the losses that we saw across the country from Trump endorsed candidates last night, but people who didn't lean in and act boldly um, with with conservative agendas, but rather relied on on Trump endorsements. Um, really um, highlights the fact that Governor DeSantis was able to turn Florida red and still is the only um, true winner on that stage and, and is still seen by the future of the party. You saw in your own numbers before that he clearly is the only one that can beat Donald Trump. And I think tonight I'm very excited to see uh, his conservative record of, re of conservative results go up against Nikki Haley. Uh, Kirsten, then Kristen. So, Kirsten, how prominently do you believe the issue of abortion and the Republican Party nationally's perspective and approach to that issue will play tonight? Well, I think it's going to be an issue. Obviously, we saw the results last night. I think Nikki's been very clear about her present position on abortion. Uh, she's pro-life, but she's also realistic and wants to be a consensus builder on the issue. She's being honest with voters, and I think that's what we need right now on that issue. But I also think it's one of many issues, and I think that she's going to show um, her, you know, her views on uh, having a strong America um, right now. And I, obviously, that is one of her strength as, strengths as a former UN ambassador. But I also think they're going to talk about rising inflation and uh, you know interest rates that are preventing Americans from across the, across the country from paying off credit card bills and buying houses. So I think you're going to see uh, that being one of many issues that they're all going to contrast on tonight. And very quickly, Kristen, abortion for Governor DeSantis. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm curious to see which Nikki Haley is going to show up on abortion tonight. She She's very good about moving her political stances with the wind. And so we'll see tonight if we get the more moderate Nikki Haley on abortion or the Republican primary uh, uh, candidate uh, on abortion. Look, Governor DeSantis um, has his convictions and he leads boldly and he was able to turn. We're going to be in Miami-Dade County where he was able to win in 2022, something that, that Republicans had not been able to do. And he didn't have to compromise on his beliefs. And so if Nikki Haley is going to offer a compromising on true core beliefs of conservatives and people of faith, then that is not going to uh, get her very far in Iowa or beyond. Kristen Davidson and Kirsten Perkowski, we thank you very much for your time and good luck to both of you this evening.